the, the RDAs for protein were determined more than 100 years ago by the uh, USDA, US Department of Agriculture. And what they did was they looked at studies that determined how much, rat, uh, how much protein a rat needed to thrive. Okay, now rats, uh, you know, all mammals share a lot of DNA, but we have many differences between us and rats. For one thing, they grow much faster than we do. And that would typically suggest they would need more protein. Okay? But because they wanted to be really conservative, they took the, the answers, the number they got, from looking at these rat studies, and then they doubled it to be conservative. So once they determined how much a rat needed, as a percentage of its caloric intake, they doubled it. Then, the lobbyists from the meat and dairy industry came calling and said, hey guys, do us a favor. And so they doubled it again. So the official recommendation by the USDA is four times what was determined a rat needs to survive, thrive, which is much more than human needs. Our actual protein needs are much, much lower than most people think they are. And if you think about this, if, if protein is the building block of living cell tissue, and it is, of all living cell tissue, at what stage of a human's lifetime do you think we would need the most protein? Wouldn't it make sense that we would need the most protein when we were growing the fastest? So when does that occur? Well, we're infants, right? Right? Um, you have children. Yep. Do you remember your children's birth weights? Yep. What were they? Three and a half, three point seven kilograms. Kilograms. Okay. So your your children were both above average weight. Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. The average uh, child is seven pounds, and three and a half is more than that. Three and a half is uh, seven point seven, close to eight pounds. Um, the average baby is born at seven pounds, and weighs roughly twenty pounds at one year of age. So human beings triple in size in the course of one year. Now, for just a second, let's look at uh, cow milk. We were talking about dairy the other day. Um, cows, baby cows, which is what cows, cow's milk was originally made for, baby cows grow 10 times their birth weight in their first year life. 10 times, not three times. They grow more than three times faster than we do. Cow's milk contains much more fat and much more protein than human breast milk because it's designed for a different species that grows much faster than we do, okay? But if humans grow fastest as infants and need the most protein then, then human breast milk too must be heavily protein, right? Wouldn't you think? Human breast milk mostly protein, makes sense? It would make sense, wouldn't it? Um, a human baby will triple in size, consuming nothing but breast milk, with roughly 2% of its calories on average over the course of that year coming from protein. 2%. The average adult American is consuming between 20 and 25% of their calories from protein and a baby triples in size getting 2% of its calories from protein. Is it possible that we would need as adults 10 times more protein than a baby? As a percentage of calories, not in terms of grams of protein, of course we would need more if we're larger and active. But as a percentage of the calories we're consuming, would we need 10 times what they need? Of course not. Our protein needs are tiny, and there is a correlation between protein consumption and health. That's the good news. The bad news for most people is it's an inverse relationship, which means the more protein you consume, the higher your risk of disease, the higher your rates of disease, the lower your health will be. And this is not new information. In 1961, 52 years ago, the Journal of the American Medical Association published an article, a study, showing that people who consumed animal products had five times the risk of cancer and heart disease as people who did not. There's never been any evidence to refute that and many studies to support that. 
how come every doctor out there isn't telling you this? Well, it's, it's because of something I explained to you a little while ago. They don't want to believe it themselves. People believe mostly what they want to believe. Very few people are actually willing to be completely at peace with the truth when it's not what they choose to believe. But the facts are simple and clear. And, you know, if you look at it logically, it's not so hard to understand either because we, our, our bodies, our, our digestive physiology is completely different from the digestive physiology of other animals that are designed to eat animals. We're designed for things that we can digest easily, that are not toxic in the processing, that we're attracted to, things like fruit. How much protein does fruit have? Uh, between one and seven percent, most of it on the lower end of the scale, probably averaging around two percent protein. Well, it's enough for a baby to triple in size, it's probably enough for you and me too. <laughs> we don't want to triple in size. We don't want to triple in size. All we need to do is keep running the, the organism and we don't need much to do that. And it turns out that probably 75 percent of our protein needs are actually taken from within the body. What do I mean? Well, your body's not stupid. So if every single day you're breaking down hundreds of millions of cells, where do all those amino acids go? They go into your bloodstream. The amino acid pool to be recycled. We need relatively little protein from outside because most of our needs are actually met from what's in the body.